we are going to call the Selectman's meeting to order at two minutes of three. Good afternoon. Let me see if I can find my agenda here. There's a printed one for you right there, too. Bill. There's a printed one right there. All right, ah, that's good. All right, I've got. Oh, no. Oh, thank you. There we are. So we'll start with the uh, privilege of the floor. Is there um, is there an issue that you've got that you'd like to bring up, or we try to just just hear out of your interest? Or my wife dragged me over. <laughs> okay, all right. I have an issue with that. Well, <laughs> yeah, you can help. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Well, you're welcome. The um, We'll take the approval of the minutes of the meeting of December 24th. There's two 10th. 10th okay. and 20th. No, the agenda says the 24th. There's two sets. One from the 10th is first. 10th and 20th. Right. Are there any changes or additions to the meeting? I've just got a minor one on the ones from 10th. On line 86, mm -hmm. I think there's a typo in there that should be is instead of in. Yeah. At the end of the sentence, right. at the end of the line. So it's yep. just real minor. Other than that, I did fine. not see anything. Anyone see anything else? No. no? All right. Uh, Some would like to make a motion to approve the minutes of December 20th. I'll move we approve the minutes okay. of December 10th. I will second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Then we have a set from the 24th. A short one. Here's my comment about the minutes of the 24th. As written, they reflect what happened on the 24th, but they don't reflect the reality of what happened. <laughs> so is That's there right. any they way we yes. can add to that a short uh, summary of the agreements we made via phone and email? It seems to me they would be important to have captured. Yeah. Yes, I think then? that's a good idea. Let um, Sharon and I will take a crack at that and okay. bring them into so the we'll hold meeting. them off and okay. we'll just say that you know yeah. after you know after the meeting you know the following happened blah right. blah blah and yeah. I would think that we would want to capture the thought that we agreed that it was okay to house the animals temporarily right till a such and such a date and that the company was going to clean up after the animals okay so if anybody questions what we agreed, I know that's that pretty they, much that we agreed to. Well, yeah. and, and they'd be out by set, such and such a date. They right? well, they said they were going to move them down to Camden to Rick Stables the week right. after Christmas. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, we should yes. note that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Rick Stables fell through, right? Yes, it did. Right. Okay. Well, not the business, just not the business, there. just yeah. the agreement. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Is the um, tent yeah, still there? It was yesterday afternoon. The tent, but the animals pastures are gone? gone. Animals gone, pastures gone. And how about this weekend relative to animals leaving mess? Any improvement? I, we don't, I don't, I'm not even sure the animals are going to be, that the rides are going to be. You mean be past back. weekend or forward weekend? weekend? This past weekend. This past weekend? They were here. Yes, they were, they were here. But I think snow worked as their benefit because it snowed. Snowed on top of it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So we're it's not sure if they're coming back or not. Any, we, we did not get any comments. Okay. Or email. Are Could we able to uh, fine for the fact that the tent is in violation of our zoning ordinance? The tent is not. Well, was a tent permit ever issued? Um, I don't believe so. Do you need a permit for a tent? Yep. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why it doesn't go through site plan review. It gets the tent permit. Um, Well, I don't know. What do you want to do? I, should we tell them to take it down? Do you want to find them? Well, I think <laughs> I was, from an enforcement um, point of view, I was under the impression that the tent, the horses, and everything was allowed temporarily right. until the 5th. Until the middle week of, oh, I thought so, it was a week after Christmas, right. not, not the 5th, but 
So and then then <laughs> then it got extended another few days. Um, no. <laughs> he extended us. it. Not he by us. Extend. He extended it. He extended. Okay. <laughs> so, but always with a plan to, to move out. So now the horses are out, so now we got to work on getting the tent down or getting right. a permit. Now, did the horses stay here last weekend over Saturday night, or were they oh. taken out each day? I, I did I see the horse trailer leaving. I saw it on Sunday. So, on Sunday, I think. Right. So, so I don't know where they were Saturday night or yeah. Friday night. They should not be staying in town at all. That's the agreement. But the uh, the pasture was gone, and right. all the stuff from the tent was gone, so I can't see that they stay here. Well, we're on the, the tent, subject of horses. The tent doesn't belong to the horse people. The tent belongs to the mountain. Right. I should probably give you an update of the lively planning board discussion. The gist of it is, after we got to the lawyers, is w there, there's a number of unusual rulings in New Hampshire. But the gist of it is, we cannot prohibit farming activities in the valley, of which keeping and boarding horses is one of them. You can place some restrictions, but we had no basis to make a blanket restriction against farming activities in the valley. So because we had a blanket restriction, the, the attorney's argument was by state law it wouldn't apply. It was unreasonable. You can't because there, there's it's like cutting down forests in the state. It's a God-given right <laughs> to be able to farm. So we have now redrafted the ordinance, all right, uh, uh, which was, is going to place restrictions. We're essentially saying you need at least five acres certain types of uh, activities involving uh, farm animals. In order to do them, you have to follow New Hampshire's good management practices, which are pretty tough to follow. They're pretty tough standards. Um, and hopefully we'll get that approved at the upcoming town meeting. The one, I think, still unresolved issue is there is no, you're not prohibited from having pets, animals as pets. And we don't know. We, we're not sure. An we're not sure whether a pet constitutes farming or not. Uh, it's unclear. So if you wanted to have a pet goat in your backyard, you probably you may be able to. We're trying to get it clarified, but it it appears that <laughs> now, as, as as my wife says, now it's your chance to get the donkey. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's no. Uh, Stipulation and class of classification as a pet or some an animal that is used. It, the to whole thing income. talks They're about farm animals, yeah. and and it doesn't. Talks it talks about, about livestock farming, livestock, and livestock, and, and, and horses. Husbandry are defined. What is animal husbandry? Just keeping an animal for horses, work. oxen, donkeys. Yeah, animals. but does yeah. it? It doesn't say anything if you use it to to generate Just income. Just boarding them is it's, farming. Say okay, so boarding, but if we we the the answer is yeah. well we'll go let the lawyers answer. Nobody knows whether if you kept uh, chickens and claimed they were a pet, whether this new ordinance would prohibit it. Is <laughs> it's is the um, is the um, ordinance that we're considering um, having this. Um, banned from certain zones? Right. Well, it basically, um, it says you would need a minimum of five acres. Right. And if you had five acres, which there were very few parcels that are of that size, you could technically have it as long as you conform to the state requirements on good, man good management okay. practice. So it doesn't say anything about village commercial no. zones? No. Or it's in any zone. No. Any zone with this more than five acres. Mm -hmm. And you have to go to the ZBA because it's only by special exception. exception. So you got to go to the ZBA so and be able to demonstrate so that you're going to meet these good management But practices. neighbors would need to be notified. Oh, and absolutely. Be, yeah. Yeah. So but you couldn't violence. just ban it on the basis that neighbors objected. I mean, okay. it would have to be some basis other than that. So. Well, that's what I like about this job. We learn yeah. something new every Right, day, you just we? find stuff out, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> so we are, we're going to look at the tent and either get them to get a permit for that tent or remove it. Remove it. Okay. 
And is there going to be any like oomph behind that that says if it's not down by if you don't get a permit and it's not down by such and such a time, the mm -hmm. fines will what be in. Sure, they'll get a permit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Financial update. Um, well, can we do that when we talk about the budgets? Um, because all of the numbers sure. are all updated. Department head updates. Yeah. Hi, Brooke. Hi. How did you get started? <laughs> well, I'm settling in over at the Recreation Department. Um, I met a lot of great people. Um, just sort of taking a lot of people have things to say to me of, of changes they want to see or things that they like that they don't want to go. So that's good. Uh, right now I'm um, trying to create some email list and get a sense of what people want and you know in a more formal fashion so that we can create programs based on that. So we're trying to through the month of January put out sign up sheets that will um, give people an opportunity to sign up for like a weekly electronic newsletter or a monthly one based on their interests. So if they're local, they're interested in adult programming, children's, or if they just want to hear the monthly blurb or the summer, whatever. So we're trying to organize that. Um, let's see. Also evaluating really the big thing that, that I want to get together is evaluating the fee structure for all the programs and the rentals so that we can take a look at that. Some of the fees from a first look look kind of outdated. So we can look at that and put it into categories of property owners, visitors, and employees. And hopefully we can present that um, okay. at the end of the month. Other than that, um, we continue to have people coming in and coming out, and it's, it's going well. You kind of getting everything you need at this stage? Or? At this point, I am. Good. I feel, yeah, a lot of support. It's a good group of people over there right now. Um, everyone in, in the town has been very supportive, and um, it's, it's, it's going peachy. Great. So far, so good. Any no, yeah. questions? No. no. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Chris. Uh, it's been ambulances. Actually, the first thing is the ambulance is coming next week. All right. The new one. The new, the new one. one. Yes, finally. Um, so just going down to New Jersey this weekend just to inspect it and make sure everything's what we agree on. Um, so that's exciting. It should be in service. It's arriving in town the 20th. It should be in service see the afternoon of the 20th or the 21st. That is with or without the power cart? With. With. Yeah. Okay, so that's coming um, too. Yeah, because we got the, um, yeah. <laughs> the lease. We'll bring it to town meeting. It's the escape clause is in the lease so that if town meeting doesn't approve it, we can send it back. Um, been a little, uh, people don't like it when I say slow, but for EMS and fire calls, we're only about, I know we're only 13, 14 days into the season, but we're, we're running about half of where we were last year. So In terms of um, injuries? Yeah. Up on the mountain? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So it's is that because of volume smooth. up there, or is it anything else? That that people I, scheme better. I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> they all took less than Yeah, I don't want to, I don't, don't want to say. Yeah. Um, because we don't track the volume, we track the uh, runs, so yeah. I don't right. know, it, it's hard to tell. Well, along those lines, um, an accident waiting to happen. I had uh, a mother complain to me that on the tubing hill, mm -hmm. the kids running the snowmobile are out of control. They're having fun and almost ran over a kid trying to haul the tubes back up. So not. maybe if you get a chance, whoever it's operating, if you could give them a word to... I know, know last year we had to talk to them because they were recreating more than they, on the... Right, and I think that was the objection forward. this time. The kids were running around, you know, yeah, riding around in the snowmobile, whiplashing the uh, tubes around, yeah. so... And that's against town ordinance. So. Well, regardless, I mean, it's just a friendly reminder to, you know, okay. you know not to do that. All right. Um... And Dave's been working on the uh, the generator. Yeah, that's a um, project. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, is that's that a in, separate it's in the item? Yeah. How about the dogs? No, is the dogs a are a separate item. Okay. Right. Got to wait so, for the dogs. Other than that, we're other than that, we're, we're doing very well. And, okay. Um, no, nothing earth shattering. All right. Public works. All is quiet on my end. No, no big storms. No big problems. 
got most all the roads widened out, cleared up, so. I don't know whether uh, it's, uh, the bridge over okay. by Depot Camp, is that bridge our property or is that the? It's not our property, but we do um, clear it. There are two really big potholes yes. in that decking. Those just more or less appeared uh, probably the second time a plow went over. Right. Anything can be, because I've had a couple of, well, my wife keeps complaining. <laughs> Why don't we fix these? Go slow. <laughs> spring, spring go is slow. coming. There's spring nothing slow. that I can put in it right in the, at this in point. The time that that's probably what I thought. It's not okay. going to stay. I can stop salting them and maybe they'll ice over. <laughs> no. Unless you have any questions for me. Any I, questions? I do. How are we doing now uh, with the coordination of the private plowers in the condos and things like that? Where last year we had some disconnects with who was doing what in different corners being pushed back and yeah, things, communication things, is going well? Things aren't perfect this year, but things are a lot better than they have yeah. been in the past. And are we allowing them to use salt or that go by the wayside? Yeah. So that's, that's gone. We're not having to worry about that issue. No, no. All of the, all of the uh, private plowers are, are supplying their own salt sand. Okay. The new building is... New building very is... Um, helpful. Very helpful. We were able to it's do worked. repairs on about six... Uh, dumpsters? Yes, we got six dumpsters out. I think we may, I, I don't want to speak too soon, but I think we may even have a spare at this point. Though. So Boulderwood's been redumpstered? Hmm? Boulderwood's been yes. redumpstered? Yep. Good. Okay. Yep. Calendar? Calendar. A couple of things on the calendar. I, I have um, our town budget here, our next uh, selectman's meeting is currently scheduled for January 28th. Right. Um, the town budget hearing, February 4th at 6 p.m. That's in the multi-purpose room? That's at the multi-purpose room, just for okay. scheduling purposes. Um, the school district budget hearing is also going to be over in the multi-purpose room. That's Monday, February 9th. Could you remind them ahead of time that it would be helpful if they could, Get it. I think they agreed last year as a sense of the meeting, they would actually have the budget published prior to the hearing? Yeah. And it's not the it's always tough to, to, to walk into the meeting and be handed the budget. Mm -hmm. But I think they, they agreed they would do that, would get it published okay. ahead of time. Yeah. Um, the audit uh, begins Monday. Um, do you guys need to meet with Paul while he's here? He'll probably be here for two days, so either Monday or Tuesday of next week. Do you have any reason to meet with him? It's up to you. Um, I don't know. I don't think so, Mark. No, I don't think no? so. No? Okay. Um, and then for um, public notice um, town meeting obviously is March 10th second Tuesday of March and, and what the, time is the town meeting start town meeting will begin at 3 p.m. the deliberative session and we begin voting at 11 and go from 11 mm -hmm. to to 2 that's March 10th yes 11 to 2 for voting since this is just just a town is it necessary? Do we? Does the selectman have to be present? Yes, okay. starting at eleven. Right, that's what we did last year. I don't think. I'll yeah, check. well, last year we did. It was eleven to seven. Eleven to seven, because we had. Do you do you want to go with extended hours on the voting? But it's you set the you set the times. How many? Uh, who's who's. Uh, do there are any fewer than last year because this year we have a selectman. Uh, who's, the whose term is up? Yours. My term. Yeah. Your term, uh, the moderator, oh, yeah. um, a trustee of the trust funds, and a library, library trustee. trustee. And then the school will have their ballot. Have we had anybody uh, express an interest in no. running for selectman? Not yet. It opens a week from today. The poll, the um, sign-up period, I believe, is a week from today. Okay. So I have not 
I've not had anybody call me or say anything to me. All right. Okay. Um, so uh, we don't. I guess we don't have to decide today. We we need to decide by the by the um, public hearing on the budget on February fourth. But the as far as the poll periods, whatever you would, you can either go with the four hours. Right. Prior to town meeting, or you can go with eight hours and go eleven to seven, like you did last year. The the um, the motion to change the, uh, the zoning amendments. No, well, the zoning amendments have to be yeah. voted on, right? Correct. But the changes to the dog ordinance that'll be during the deliberative session. session. That's okay. a vote right, at fine. town meeting. The, now we may have several. I mean, I we're going to have come four up with or five. Reason. I mean, unless somebody requests. I mean, I don't think. Why would we want to hold the voting open? Do you have a reason to hold it open? I think we get everybody comes who's going to vote within that four hours. We've never had real complaints. I think as long as everyone's aware of it. When we had our, our last election, right. people came in and said, "Well, I think I thought it started at nine o'clock in the morning." But uh, yeah. as long as it's well published, I think maybe a little more signage. Okay. And if if somebody we'll asks for a secret ballot, you know, the, you yeah. know, like, oh, here's an item, well, I don't, you know, go. that's really separate from the election per se, right? That is. That's right. after the deliberative session. session. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. We've done that before. Yeah. yeah. We have the, mm -hmm. them available. I've already had people ask me if that can be. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you, do you want to make a final decision February 4th and kind of talk to folks? I would be in out? favor of 11 to 3. Margaret? Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. yeah. Mike? Yeah, 11 to 3. All right. So we'll talk to Marilyn and let her know. Okay? All right. Good. And that's pretty much it, right? Two Three calendars? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, new business. New business. Sign in water and sewer warrants for the fourth quarter. Yeah, These are just, just uh, yeah, this is the, uh, the, the regular quarterly um, billing warrant. Um, we do have the new meters installed. Um, we have 31 uh, commercial installations now. We used to have 21. Mm. Um, the we do not have the reader. Um, we are borrowing a reader from Styles, the vendor who's providing the meters to us. Um, but it the reader that they're using is not working properly. So I would request that we get a vote. Um, and, and this is not the reader that we're going to ultimately have. They have an older model, and it's not, it's not working. The readings that we're getting are not correct. We know they're not, and we're, we're going to get it fixed before we close the contract, obviously. Um, but we need a vote because we were supposed to use the actual readings for this quarterly billing right. to start. Or we're supposed to um, we're we supposed to use them and then if it was it, that's right either and, and it would be an either or that's right either you were going to get an abatement mm -hmm. if it was lower or you were going to get your actual bill if it was if your average was higher than than the bill so um, so but what these these are for people that where their water in the past had been metered had been metered. And the problem now is the old meters we used to use for determining that are gone. They're gone. And the new meters are in place. When we took the readings and we entered them into the system and we looked at the billing, it is obvious that we, oh. need, to, we need to go back to the vendor and say... And so therefore you're suggesting that for the next, for this quarter, we simply charge them what we charged them last quarter? We, no, we use our the historical... Our historical quarterly average for the fourth quarter. So their bill will be basically the average of their last two years fourth for the quarter. fourth quarter. 
So we're not we're not charging and them a when, flat. When fee. will this problem be resolved? Uh, we are we are working on resolving it during the month, probably during the month of February. But the problem, but even even if we get a meter in March, the first quarter is going to again have to be based on averages, right? Well, we that's right. We may need to do that for the first quarter of fifteen, but. It, it will depend on when they can get in here and get them well, fixed. Well, if you don't have a reading as of the first of the year that's accurate, how could that's you, right. what good does the reading give you in April? We don't know if it You've is go the two meters. Quarters. Well, right. we can't read the meters right now. We don't know if it's the meters or if it's the readers that are causing the problem. So it could, it it could, could be, be just the reader because we're using an older model reader and we but if the but meter is my point, suppose it correctly. is the meter. The, the, if you don't have, have a reading, the start reading on January right. 1st, uh, an end reading doesn't do you any good, right? That's correct. So, so I'm just saying, should we notify people that, you know, minimally for the first, for the fourth and first quarter, we're probably going to have to use your average? Because I don't know how you're going to get anything other than that. I don't know. You're right. All right. So if you're going to send, if you're going to tell them it's going to be an average, just tell them for the next two quarters okay. we're going to use an average. All right. And okay. try to get it started. Right for March. Right. So mm -hmm. you'd have to get a reading at the end of March, which is essentially just a start reading. Yes. Okay. All right. So we need to sign go. this. Ah, uh, yes, you need to sign. That. All right. All right. Skating times. Yeah, I spoke with Fred, Fred uh, Gendron from the Hockey Academy yesterday. Um, we had sufficient um, public skate times during the Christmas week of the two-week period. Um, there, there was a greatly reduced number. They only had three or four public skate periods the entire week during New Year's. Um, they are having staffing issues over there, he told me. Um, and we discussed going forward, and I have not seen an updated schedule. I don't know if you guys have from the Resort Insider or anything. I quickly um, read the contract. Does the contract specify when the hours are to occur? No. The contract, by the lease, it says that they will provide public skate periods during vacation on weekends, vacation weeks, and holidays. That's, we left it pretty generic. We did not specify actual numbers of hours or anything like that. So, Fred knows what the concern is because skating is part of the Freedom Pass program. Right. Um, and Matt, he is having discussions with Matt Hesser, um, representing the Resort Association. So, and Fred told me that he will make sure that during weekends, like the holiday weekend coming up, um, that they will have public skate period. And it ought to, at I'm least thinking our position should be, I think the intent when we signed that they would be reasonable. In other words, oh, sure. they wouldn't hold them at midnight. No. You no, know, no, no, that no, it would be. No, he's talking like five to seven, which is a pretty good mm -hmm. time. People are off the hill and right. you know, if they want to okay. skate, that's fine. Um, but he asked if he needed to have a public skate period included in the midweek periods. And I told him that that's not what's in the lease, and that's not what we discussed. I mean, there's hardly anyone here, and he shouldn't have to right. have a public skate period when there are no guests in the valley. It's when the people are here that we want. If uh, I don't think if need be, but uh, I, I I bumped into Kevin Saban, mm -hmm. and he said he. If there's any pushback at all, he'd be more than glad to get involved because yep. as far as he was Same concerned, friend. that was one of the key agreements was yep. that they would provide that and they can't back off that. No, you know. Fred Fred was not trying to get out of it at all. Okay. He said that 
he will make sure that that that, that happens. So we just okay. need to monitor it. And, and so you'll give us an update at the will. next meeting. Yep. See how it's going. Yep. All right. Any other questions about no. that? The side. All right. Year in debatement. We have an abatement request from one. Yeah. If you could just one individual. Well, it's not even from the individual. It's from us. It was a a credit that was that was uh, from 2013 was uh, mistakenly applied to 2014. If I could just have to sign this. So this we have to make a this motion. This is an administrative error. Uh, Do we need a motion to correct yes. an administrative error? Yep. Uh, all right, so this is in grant and abatement request of $82. In, in grant and abatement of $82.42 to uh, Akanamu. Yep. Is that their name? Akanamu. Yes, it is. All right. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Curious Jobs Observatory. They want to put a tent. Oh, on top of the observatory. Tell them we got a te tent for. <laughs> yeah, they want to put a. They want to temporarily. The shutters in the dome are closing completely, and it's leaking in. And Sherry just wants to put a tarp over it until they can get the shutters. It's still too cold. To why is it? Work. Why are they asking us? Is it because well, it's our property? No, or? I. Well, it is the town's property, but I just wanted, as I wrote here, I just wanted you to be aware oh, of okay. the temporary situation. Yeah. I don't think we really need an approval. I, right. I just didn't want a blue tarp to be put over the observatory and not have you guys know what was going on. And also so people out in internet land <coughs> can know. Okay. Dogs. All right. Old business. Let's talk about dogs. And I, I see you, both you gentlemen have drafted up some fairly s in language. Um, well, let, let me start. Let, let the, are you suggesting that this is what the ordinance ought to be written at as opposed to what we wrote? Or is this some additional definitions to help the ordinance? Or I'll, what? I'll let Dave summarize it. But what we did was we took the current ordinance, did some house keeping on right. it to, to make them legally binding and okay. then um, added, added some things, so I'll let Dave take it from there. Sure. Um, you probably have that bullet memo mm -hmm. that kind of goes through the ordinance. I can kind of go through that with you. Um, well, I have got two of them. That's why I... Okay. Now, wait a minute. I guess they're all the same <coughs> one. I guess they're just different versions of the same one, right? Is there one of them or two of them? There's a memo. There's a memo. A memo. Right and then there. I've got orders. There's a memo that, that explains the Big, proposed right. draft. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And then you should have a copy of the ordinance. That's the ordinance itself. says number seven That's on top. That's correct. Yeah. With right. with the changes in. Um. So what what we did is we looked at um. um uh, I looked at dozens of other dog ordinances throughout the country through uh, a network through the International Association of Chiefs of Police. Uh, they've got literally dozens and dozens of, of these from all over the country. Uh, what I did was I took pieces. One, I started with the basis of the state law, which is what our original ordinance is based on. Right. Um, I don't um, I never really agreed on how it was originally posted or written because there was no reference to the actual state law that controls dogs. Uh, so what I did was include that language that points that says, yes, we adopted this portion of the dog control uh, state law as our ordinance. And then what I did was um, uh, actually put that language into the ordinance itself, okay, and to include uh, the nuisance portion, and then put it in a way that that kind of made sense. 
the modifications to that ordinance and creating that um, is more in the definitions, which uh, defines what a company means uh, and what, what a responsible party is. Okay. Uh, and that's important only because it needs to be defined that it's not only just a dog owner, but anyone who's in control of the dog. Sure. Uh, could be a family member, friend, what have you. Um, and what it does is it also, um, instead of the strict leash law, what it establishes is establishes a, a three-prong um, requirement of dog owners for them to be, or who these responsible parties to be, personally present, under voice control, and they got to be attentive to okay. the dog. Uh, and the biggest change in this is the voice control. Now this doesn't include, there's a section in here that says if dogs are hunting or training for shows, it doesn't include those, and those are separately broken out in here. But uh, for the common everyday dog owner who's walking their dog down the street, mm -hmm. as long as they're doing these three things uh, and it doesn't approach any person uh, within 10 feet that does not want the dog to be approached by a dog. Mm -hmm. The dog must be able to be recalled by the owner uh, and stay away from that particular person. Okay. Uh, it is um, a, a positive defense that if the person says, hi, how you doing? Hi, can I pat your dog? that there is now no violation there. Right. Okay. Uh, as an enforcement standpoint... There's no violation of the fact no that violation. the dog got closer than 10 feet. If the dog bites the person, even after they said, is it okay to pet my dog, and you say yes, and the dog bites him, then that's it's a, a violation. Problem. Yeah. Yes. Then it's a violation. Your dog can't bite anybody. Right. Uh, but but <laughs> if, <laughs> if the dog, <laughs> regardless of whether say, hi, I, I can see... <laughs> That's if you're not on uh, their property, right. uh, their own personal property. Okay. Uh, um, so, uh, as part of that is really the biggest change and what I... Well, what let's, I feel let's go through the dog control. I yeah, make sure, and I read these, I mm -hmm. have some questions about the way some of it's worded. Sure. On the dog control A, Yes. As I interpreted the way it was written, it shall be unlawful for any dog to run at large except when accompanied by a responsible party and when used for hunting, guarding, working. Um, it, I interpreted that to mean that unless you were using your dog for hunting, guarding, working, or supervised competition, he couldn't be at large. No, he can't be. Well, he can't be at large. Uh, I don't think that was. It, it, that's what I'm struggling with. Doesn't I thought we, in, I thought we, what we were going to allow was it'd be okay for your dog to be at large, as long as he met all the other requirements and then didn't go within right. ten feet, didn't do anything, regardless of what the dog yeah. was doing. Can I look at paragraph C, Bill? Though yeah. there's a definition of at large. It's the definition of yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Yeah, but A yeah. basically says, uh, yeah, unless your dog, as I interpreted, is being used for hunting, guarding, working, or supervised competition, it can't be off leash. Oh, no, that's not what it says. No. It can't be. Well, no, that's I, how I, I interpret it. I can see how it's <laughs> no, interpreting it, but I've got a way to fix yeah. that. Yeah. Just put a period after or, responsible party or, because I don't think those things, no one's going to be hunting. Or how about an or after and? And no, or. And, and or when you use. This, that's well, I, I hear you. Yeah, is, right. Is, okay. <laughs> is you don't want to restrict people who say bring their dogs and right. want to hunt with them. That can do well, that. Well, there'd be so no reason to include hunting, right? Because there's I'm no sorry. place you could hunt in in, on town in property. Forest. Yeah, but this doesn't apply to national forests. It does. A town oh, ordinance it's does. Within jurisdiction. A town ordinance does, not yes. the zoning ordinance. A town ordinance. These. Yeah. Oh, I thought, I thought the Forest Service rules overrode our rules. They have their own rules. So it's In either addition. or, which applies, whichever guy uh, catches you. Whichever one's more stringent. Whoever's bad shows up. <laughs> 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 
So if it's you or, or it's that the guy in the brown uniform. It's yeah. Green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's kind of the rules. Yeah. Uh, this, our town ordinance is from, encompasses the entire town border. Okay. So it's not just thinking of the valley, and that's why this is written into it, because you have to have those considerations for those hunters or other people who may say, go to incinerator road and want to train their dog for whatever particular purpose. So now the, the, uh, uh, so the interpretation is, is help me now. Dogs, not, dogs at large got to be under your control. That's true if you're hunting, guarding, working, or supervised? No, or that's what that, that You're section, saying it doesn't necessarily section, have to be under your control. No, that section um, uh, separates it, and, it's, and it defines in section B what accompanied means. So accompanied, so you have your hunters, your hunting dogs and training dogs, and then you have your, your regular dog owners. What this is saying is that the hunters and trainers are treated differently than your typical dog owners. Those people do not have to have sight control as long as they know where the dog is and they're actually engaged, engaged in that activity. It's, then it goes into what the typical at large, they can't just open their door and say, oh, my dog's out hunting today and they'll let them run around. Right. Now. So what that does is it separates your hunt, those people doing those activities, and then your regular, typical dog, per, dog, dog owner. Okay. Because they do have different rules. And that's under, and that language is actually taken from the state statute. Should, should in part A, to Mike's point though, uh, on the second line, except when accompanied by a, a responsible party, shouldn't that and be an or? And or. or I think and, and or. 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 Yeah. or. Yeah. Yeah, if you throw an or in there, or. then it defines two classes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And I don't necessarily have a problem with the or. Mm -hmm. Because generally on the valley floor, none of those ores are going to apply, right? Right. Correct. Okay. For the permit B, for the purpose of this section, company means the responsible party must be able to see, hear, or both, or have reasonable knowledge of where the dog is. And what and and except you're saying when hunting. Where training is being conducted, where trials being made, right? You're saying site control isn't. See, it's that last sentence that got me. It says nothing herein provided shall mean the dog must be in within sight at all times. You're saying only as applied to those specific tasks. Correct. That's only applied to. Because when tasks. I when I read it, it implied implied to me it applied to the whole paragraph. Now, that could just be me. But uh, I, we that, need to be that clear that it is really for those hunting right. and other type activities. Yeah, they, the they don't have to be within sight control because we're seeing we, 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 everyone else, the dog should be within sight control, no, so sight like, or hearing. Yeah. Yep. Right. Or reasonable knowledge of where the dog is, right? I mean, That's right. You know, I can understand if the dog's standing behind a tree, you, you know. And what what um, <laughs> if we said for the purpose of. Uh, hunting, guarding, working, or supervised competition instead of this section. Yeah. Just put what it is for. Would that help clarify it, Bill? Then. Yeah, I don't want to create any any confusion. Um, yeah, we we can. Does that? Yeah. yeah. Well, it, we this section was taken right out of the statute. No, no, right. So, yes, no, I, I mean, understand. We don't, you don't want to lose the sense, though, that the ordinary dog owner must be able to hear. Right, or, or see, see his dog. Correct. Yeah. that yeah. That's okay, my problem. All right. Is, is it dilutes it down to the point, and then somebody ends up on the last sentence and saying, Nothing here in you know says that you you must be within sight at all times. How, how well, that's what we're trying to encourage: is the dog is within sight at all times for the purpose of dog control, mm -hmm. instead of this section. Just put the title of the section for the purpose of dog control, because it 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 applies to the section, right? Yes. The dog. Yes, so just, just say just for the purposes of dog section. control. 
section. Right. I don't think that changes the meaning by doing that. I think specifically when you get into for the purpose of hunting or whatever you're going to call these other things. But dog control is our, is our subcategory here. Well, but, but accompanied applies to the whole section of dog control. Right, I understand Anytime that, but what I'm, I'm, I'm hearing what Bill's saying loud and clear about that last paragraph. Nothing herein provides shall mean the dog must be within sight at all times performing these tasks. So you have to create that second class right. of in, in what situation isn't the dog required to be under right. sight. What yeah. I would do is, is I would take the first, for the purpose of this section, accompanied means responsible, and then go to the second. Be able to see, hear, or both have reasonable knowledge of what the dog is, period. Right? When hunting, training, or all these things are other trial, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, accompanied means what? It means he must, he must be under your supervision. Yes. Something like that, and then I'm fine. Okay. Okay. In this uh, C, I have no problem with C. D, D is a tough standard. <laughs> yeah. D is a really, t I mean, basically, you're, there are very few dogs <laughs> that you're out there <laughs> and you say, Fido, come back here, you know, and, you know, and he's coming back, you know. Well, but this is. I mean, the key I, I, I'm, I'm really talking to the other celebrity. No, 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 I understand. I, I, you know, go ahead. I just want to say that for the record, the public safety department doesn't see a need to change anything from where it is. Yeah, okay. I, I, I know. Record. Okay. But we do have a need to change something. Okay. <laughs> this this paragraph is the that. paragraph that allows us to not have mandatory leashes, though. As long as that dog doesn't violate the 10-foot rule by someone who doesn't want them within 10 feet of them, this prevents us from How having about to have the dogs on the leash. No, How about if we change the word from immediately to reasonably? Because the statute says, right? Yeah, but, but this is our statute. From we statute can do this this is actually not as far as the statute. Okay. This Good. is our if we, right. yeah. if we make it reasonably, instead of immediately, I think. Uh, well, I just drop out immediately. That as used in this ordinance, her voice yeah. control means the dog returns to and remains by the side of the responsible party in response to the responsible party's verbal command. If a dog uh, approaches or remains within ten feet of any other person and they don't want it, that's a problem. No, I, I, I'm okay with that. Yeah, get rid of immediately. Okay. Now, the one thing that I saw in here that was missing was the the statement that it basically says, regardless of circumstances, if you're in a group of 25 or more people in a public space, put that dog on a leash. Yeah. I didn't know you wanted that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. That was one to, you know, remit. Basically, re if you're in a square. public space, like Town Square or Packard's Field, there's or more than 25 the, people present. The beach. Dogs go on a leash. They are not allowed to be under your control. You know, you can't use any argument such as that. you got to leash them up. special exceptions? No. Well, I mean, even... Uh, I mean, let me let. How about the only thing I can think of? You had a, 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 a an assist a dog that was assisting you. They're on leash all the time anyway, right? I mean, yes. yeah. I mean, you're not yeah. going to have a dog like that running around, right? Um, yeah, unless there's a pause on Packard. Yeah. I, I'm thinking of one of those types of events. Mm. Yeah, well, I think we can always make a special exception to our own rules if we are having a competition. And I like the fact that you said that if there was a, uh, some kind of a supervised competition, um, the, rules don't, the rules don't apply. And that's reasonable. Yeah. So if I'm walking, my, I'm walking around town with my dog, it's under voice control. But if I go into the post office at Town Square, i got to put them on the right. leash. Or if you go into Town Square and there's more than 25 people that day yeah. in Town Square, your dog's got to go on a leash. 
you're over on Packard's field, and as Mike said, you know, you're they're playing playing uh, soccer. Or, yeah. You you put your dog on a leash. Don't you you, you got to get at that point in time. You leash him up. A couple of people that I've talked to all said the same thing. They would that that is exactly they would do that anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would not have a dog running around with all those people present. Because the, you know. So, I, yeah, I'd like, uh, I think yeah. we ought to include, incorporate a statement that says, and, and 25 seems to, yeah. it's arbitrary, but it seems to be a reasonable number. Small crowd, get your dog on a leash. Margaret, you're okay with the 10 foot rule here? Yeah, I think if you take out immediately. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Good squirrel could throw that thing immediately <laughs> gone. <laughs> On the section yeah. F, uh, mm -hmm. any the way the ordinance reads now is any uh, authorized any authorized person by the selectmen. I think we ought to probably continue. And what's an authorized person? Who who authorizes a person? You do. Right. That's, so uh, we. We are, we are currently your authorized people. Right. right. <laughs> but we could technically authorize more. You can. Right. Okay. Uh, but this just, what this does is it actually protects right. uh, some of those dog owners from people snatching dogs and yeah. bringing them home. They actually have to either turn them over to us or bring them to some place. Um, and, and under G, uh, it would imply that only the police are able to, and I guess that's true, we don't, they're the only ones who would actually issue a summons or a violation, right? Correct. Okay. All right. Moving on. Dogs and menace are news. I love this. If it barks for sustained periods of more than a half hour. <laughs> That's the state law. Really? Yeah. Is that it? Really? That's a cut and paste. Yeah, this is a cut and paste of the state law. And I included it in here because this is what we have been uh, writing citations under. Uh, is under right. uh, this particular state statute. And I, I felt that it would be appropriate to include it as part of our ordinance because we can modify it, make it more restrictive if we, if we wanted to. Uh, but it also made it clearer for um, the citizens and the dog owners of the town to see exactly uh, in our ordinance what we're basing any of these violations on. And these are pretty specific. So. Okay. Any thoughts about this one? This section. Well, nobody's complained about my dogs mm -hmm. barking at night, so I'm assuming that. I, I don't hear your dog barking at night. I have. Not for a half hour. No, no. <laughs> that's no, pretty tough. Never for a half, half hour. But half yeah. hour is long. I'm not awake for a half hour at night. <laughs> of this whole ordinance is, is a lot of times it is very, you're not going to see one of our officers actively looking for this kind of stuff. No. It takes somebody to complain. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a complainant. And, 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 and we are going to start an educational campaign along the lines of doing exactly that. If you've yeah. got a problem with dogs, it's your responsibility as a citizen to notify the police. To tell them. You know, they are not, we don't have dog control offices and it's, and we're not gonna, it's unreasonable to expect. So if you're not complaining, nothing's gonna happen. That's right. Uh, and we're not the ones who are going to be the, the test if we see a dog walking down the sidewalk right. and another person's approaching. We're not going to be the ones sitting there waiting to see if the person wants it or not. And, going it's, to be on it, and it's going to need, uh, these people are going to need to speak up. Yes. Well, what we've asked them to do is, to, is, I suggested in the article that I wrote, is take out your cell phone, take a picture of the dog, send it to them. Yep. You know, and if they can figure out whose dog it was, you remind people you're not supposed to have your dog running around. Sure. And they can call us, and it's better right. if we pick up the dog. Then we're much better in a much better spot for finding on them. Okay. 
animal waste. Right. I, I didn't have a problem with that. We are going to have a lengthy or now it raised it brought up the question of animal waste. Is it dog waste or animal waste? Now that we've got these horses running around. <laughs> well, under the state law, you the town can regulate or or control the horse waste in the road. You can already, you already have. So you don't the feel right. you need anything. With it in the dog, <coughs> I don't think this would. No, not, not, no. not no. This is not simply this making. Is, this is just making separate. people understand that state law applies. Yes, yeah, sure. state law yeah. already addresses. Yes, already addresses this, but people didn't think. That's right. It did. That's you know. Right. So we'll leave it at dogs. Well, it actually does say animal waste. So we can interpret that to mean animal waste. Right? If you're walking your goat, it doesn't make any difference. But it does say him, so does say is that okay? Yeah. 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 Clean up after your goat. Pot belly pig, you got to clean up after it. Okay. And I thought this uh, definitely helped address a lot of the concerns that we had in our open meeting. And right. What we've been hearing from a lot of folks. So I'd ask you to go back, take a look at A and B, and make sure that for these specialty purposes it's clear what the rules are that apply to the average person. Sure. Add a section, add, if you would add just a section in San Jose says if there's, if you're in a public place, more than 25 people, dog goes on a leash, regardless. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I'm fine. Now we've got a lengthy ordinance. Yeah, I got I have one, go ahead. one question that I, I wondered. It's probably been on the books for a while, but does it muddy the water at all? Section 4, no dog shall be kept within the limits of town unless such dog is licensed by its owner according. What about our second homeowners? Um, does, they still have to... I used, Guido used to have dual citizenship. All dogs have to be licensed okay. if they're over four months old. So we require that if you are going to be here on a semi-regular basis, your dog needs to be licensed. Yeah, if you're considered a resident, they have oh, to I be I understand residents, but, but I was just um, talking about the part-time people. Yeah. Why, why would it be, to you, if you're a part-timer, why, why would you want to register a dog? In case your dog gets lost, the tag. That's why I did it. Yeah, and there's uh, the state requirement if you're a state resident. Uh, we can't control what they do in Massachusetts, but... Uh, as a state resident, the state law requires, you know, the dog Shots. to have its vaccinations and, and that be on record with the veterinarian. So in the case that it does fight somebody. What do we charge for a dog registration? Eight bucks? Uh, or Twelve? Seven dollars? Mm -hmm. How many do you get for non-residents? Not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Do you have any? <laughs> Very well, we need to start a camp. Any, the question is, should we start a campaign dogs. so that uh, uh, encouraging people here that are part-time owners and have a dog, we think it's to your advantage to get your dog registered here as well because if your dog takes off in the woods, he, he, he may not find you. They may not be able to locate you. Or they're going to be you. calling your house in Massachusetts looking yeah, for I, you. I don't know how much your com compliance you're going to get because the intent is um, under state law that it has to be licensed. It doesn't say it has to be licensed here. Mm -hmm. As long as it's licensed someplace mm -hmm. and it has a tag that's, All right. um, that can be traced back to them, that's the only state requirement. And the only reason why I included it here is because nowhere else in our ordinance does it say other than in state law, it doesn't say you have to register your dog. Okay. So, I'm just trying to think out loud. Where, where could we encourage people? Why would people want to register their dog a second time? If you're a non, if you're a resident, you, you were saying if you're a resident here, you must register your dog here. But if you're a non-resident, we would encourage you to register it because we'll get your home address here. Because if your dog gets lost mm -hmm. here in the woods, it's going to get returned a heck of a lot quicker. It's going to have your Massachusetts address. Mm -hmm. it, it would be quicker for you. So because so you're going to ask for people to yeah. voluntarily. Sure. Could yes, we, uh, on the registration of for non-residents, could we waive the $8 fee? 
I mean, eight bucks is not much. Well, those tags see. are expensive. That's got to cost 15 cents. <laughs> yeah, those little bones. <laughs> <laughs> um, historically, we haven't had a big issue with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it takes a little bit more detective work, so to speak, yeah. on our part, calling the home, right. maybe find out who the dog owner is, and then we check, check property the records. Property records. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and then by, by the time we start calling hotels or anywhere else, these owners will, will show I, I, I'm wondering if we just um, uh, on the website or something built a thing for non-residents said if you have a dog and you bring him here occasionally on the weekends and you're a second property owner let us know the name of your dog mm -hmm. your license number where it's licensed the only reason I want the list of names is so that we can send them information about what our ordinance is mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the only yeah. reason it is so that we can get a list of most of the people who have dogs and we know who they are so that we can say here are the rules you know yeah, yeah. so I think I mark think about that mm -hmm. whether we could okay. just do a voluntary thing that way you know so you don't it doesn't cost you any money sure tell us your tell us where the dog is licensed give us his number yeah. and uh, I think that's probably the way to do it if you have a valid license somewhere and that and way it helps us in cost. case your dog is lost mm -hmm. to be able to return them much quicker mm -hmm. than to have to go through and check with the state and you know check with non you know with other towns and try to find out who we are I'm still back on um, on animal waste which is in the middle of an ordinance that's strictly about dogs mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if we need to be doing something with that. Call it dog waste? You're yeah, saying? I mean, we can right. call it dog waste and we can say, you know, that the, the applicable rules is, are the same as they are for an, all animal waste as outlined in state law, right. such and such, and then go into this. Yeah, or we fine. could I, reference a separate ordinance and have an animal waste ordinance. Yeah, that's that's another way of doing it. Um, if you're going to generalize everybody. it for all, if you want to make it for all animals, I'd recommend pulling it out and making it separate. Uh, other than burying it in a dog ordinance for all animals. Um, right. If if well, you don't have a problem with it, I am no. You know, okay. if you don't have a problem with other animals, I mean, yeah. you're saying yeah. you're covered. Yeah. I'm yet. Right. No, I'm talking about the horses. Oh, oh. If we yeah. if we get someone yeah. who brings horses right. in, right. You know, it's good for us to have an ordinance on the books that deals with that. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a pretty lengthy ordinance here. That's um that's typical of dog ordinances. Are they? Yeah. It 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 Ours was kind very, of very implies short. we're serious. <laughs> 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 yeah, and and you know I okay. think if there is a separate um, ordinance specifically about animal waste, um, I think that we've kind of hit the two highest yeah. um, concerns that people mm -hmm. have expressed in their meetings. One right. of them being keeping the dogs under the control, and the other being handling proper handling of the waste. Yep. And we can talk about that on the 28th, the animal waste. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, my only thing is, is I'd like to see A and B redrafted and a statement in there to the effect of um, the more than 25 people. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I'm fine with these other definitions. Okay. Well, me personally, I don't, you know. You're okay then? Yeah? Mike? Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. And what we'll have to do at town meeting is we're really talking again, you can write these words down. The question is what's important is what actions we're going to take. And there we need the help of citizens. To make this effect, the only way this is going to work is you as a citizen. You you understand these you know you understand these rules. You got to tell 
the, the law enforcement offices when there are dogs that, mm -hmm. you know, I that know. that you don't think meet these standards. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the world's going to be the same. All right. Okay. Can we talk about generators? So Generators. So I gave I gave you a memo. Uh, is that your Bill? You had asked me to. Yes. Why uh, do we need a generator? Why do we need a generator? Right. Okay. That's my question. So you also asked what type of generator and all of that. Um, right now, we we have specified this uh, proposal uh, for this amount of eighty eight thousand is for an eighty kW. Uh, generator. That generator has been sized to power this entire building, all of the electrical needs, and a 20% excess capacity for future increases to those requirements. Uh, the cost of the generator itself is $70,000. Um, the with $15,000 for. We, our current service, our current electrical service, will not allow us to attach a generator to this building uh, the way that it is. It right. has to be redone. Um, so that, along with the labor for the installation, is fifteen thousand, and the remaining three thousand is a contingency of approximately three percent. The current electrical service um, cannot be used. To connect any generator to this building, so that fifteen thousand dollars is going to be required, no matter what. Um, we have some large power draws on that will be necessary for any generator that we use. That includes the electric heat, the furnace in the vehicle bays, the Plymouth system, which is the exhaust system for the vehicles and the air compressor. And then we have some smaller draws with the lights and the overhead doors and our computers and radios and telephones. Um, we've had the electrician look at it um, and we could uh, meet part of the building needs with a 40 kW generator. Um, the cost of that generator with the installation with the 15,000 is about $58,000. That would save us $27,000 overall on the, on the project. However, the state grant, in order to get the 50-50 matching grant from the state, you have to power the entire building. So if we went with a smaller generator, we'd save $27,000 on the overall cost of the project, but we would no longer be eligible. We'd have to fund it all ourselves. So it actually cost us $14,000 more. Um, I, you know, so that's why the recommendation is to, to propose the larger generator, which services the entire building um, and meet all of those needs. There is excess capacity there, but it's actually part of the grant program uh, to have some what, sort of excess capacity. What, what the, 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 the school right now has yes. no backup? No, they have a backup they have generator. One. They, In fact, I think they have a 65 or 70 kW generator at the school. So they put a 65, 70 k Yeah, I don't know generator. exactly what it is. So a if we had a prolonged generator. power outage due to a really severe, they, they, they we could we use can run the that gymnasium. We could use the gymnasium to house mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this, this um, I mean, this room is really the only place where we could put people. So mm -hmm. we would be very limited with the number of people that we could shelter here. Um, but well, there's no need really to if the school's no got, got a, uh, if the school's got a generator. So. so sheltering people is not a no. concern or an issue. It's, but we, we also now, remember, have our folks here 24-7. So we, you know, we're going to have staff in this building. We've given up our ultimate 
we've given up our alternate uh, housing arrangements. We're running that the bunk room here now. So and all of our emergency operations infrastructure Radi is here. Radios, yeah, radios, yeah. You know, equipment. Yeah, equipment. I have a question on the language of your proposal. Yeah. It says a program is available through the state of New Hampshire for up to one half of the cost of this total. Is that saying that we are going to get one half or up to one half? It is, the program is for up to one half, but they have told us that we are eligible with the 80 kW generator for one half of the cost. So are we assured this 44,000? No, we have to, we'll have to apply for it and it'll, it'll, It'll be dependent on Homeland Security monies that are available each year. So every year you have to apply. Now, this is going to power this building? Yes. The garage? No, it just this building. This building. Just this building. Well, it's, what about the plum event? Is, is the plum event is the, no, it's the exhaust system for the vehicles in this building. Wow. Yeah, like the, amb the ambulance has something on it. The ambulance, it's yeah. what we connect the exhaust pipes to, to and to get it outside of the building. All right, I'm losing. So this is, again, just this building? Just this. Not this garage up top here where the fire engines are. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's what But I'm not the new garage. Not, not the new garage, yeah, no. not the got, salt and sand shed. No, got, just okay, this now, complex. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'm sorry. I, and we're the electrician is the one who said you need 80 kilowatts of power to that's a that's a lot of power 80 kilowatt standby I, that's what he said to have to power everything in this building and have 20 percent excess capacity it takes an 80 kW generator that's I mean I, and the state I, has even endorsed that number yeah. And security has been working with Dave through the application process. Our other, yeah. our other quote uh, quoted us for a hundred. Four hundred amp. Service on a two forty line. It's a lot of electricity. It's a lot of electricity. It's a lot. I, I'm well. I, I don't know. I, I'm not an electrician. I, I don't know. But um, the people who we asked to size the generator. And the Homeland Security the people, people for, the uh, people yeah. who are paying for half yeah, of it, I hear you. have looked at it and said you need 80 kW, um, and we were told that a 40 kW would power some lights and get the doors to go up and down and keep the um, keep the furnace in the vehicle bays working. But again, that's going to take away the grant match. But the, the 80 kW is in line with when we went through this exercise several years ago. It's a, I don't think it's ever changed it's size not, wise. It's not changed in the last, it's only since I've been here, because I think my first year we went through that exercise. Um, I don't know. <laughs> now, is this either or what? What happens if we don't get the match? What if there's no money well, left? The budget, the the way that it is in the, the budget total is the eighty eight thousand is in on the expenditure side and forty four thousand is on the revenue side. Yeah. So we have a forty four thousand dollar shortfall. So, well, yeah, you either have a forty four thousand dollar shortfall or you don't do it if if they give us zero dollars or if they give us thirty five thousand, you decide whether or not we pay the additional So we're not amount. committing to do this unless, once, until we see their hand. Well, I, yeah, we always have that ability. Once it's approved by town meeting, we still have to go through the grant application process. So this we'll is going to be a warrant exactly. article at town meeting? No, oh. it's less than 100. Less, less than 100. Yeah, less than 100. Well, it's going to be a warrant article. I mean, I, I, well, I don't know. What were you proposing in the budget? We just include this as a cash capital? No, I, I have it in as a special it's warrant a special article. Special warrant article. Mm -hmm. So I think if it's a special warrant article, we can let the people vote and have it contingent on receiving. Yeah, but what, what, what would we advise? 
I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet. Yeah, they, they, yeah that's the problem. I'm, I'm, I, you know, we've we've gone for fifty years without one. Well, yeah, but we've but, gone through hurricanes. We've gone through some of the worst weather imaginable, and oh, now no, no, all of no, a wait, sudden we no, need a backup there, generator. No, that's there is a need for the backup generator now because the electrical connection to the backup generator that we have used is not to code. And how big is that and generator? That generator runs. Uh, it's probably a hundred kW. Maybe. Tiny. I don't know what that size yeah, I don't know is. Where it is but we only get a feed. We maybe. only get uh, a couple of lights out. We only yeah. get a, number one, we only get a couple of lights, but the bottom line is we must stop using that in July. We are not authorized. We have to disconnect from that generator in July. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not disputing not, that, that they've told you you have so to stop. So we will have nothing here. And we have used that generator in this building actually within the last three weeks. We used it for an entire day. Well, and you probably continue to need a portable generator, period. I mean, just from well, an emergency perspective, you're going to have to have a portable generator that if somebody else needs, if you need to, you know, run power out someplace, that you can pick it up, put it in the truck, drive it over there. I mean... Well, we have those kinds of generators. Yeah, right. Yeah. But you need okay. to be able to supply air to the fire trucks that runs the air system. Uh, you got to be able to open the doors so you can get the fire trucks out. Um, yeah, need, we need a generator here to do that stuff. We have generators that we can take to other buildings and, and that we can take over to pump stations or do whatever we need to do there. How do we get the door open when we need the generator before? You said you needed the generator this, within the last three weeks, right? We're still connected to the treatment plant. Oh, no, I, I understand that. But will that power getting the doors open for the ambulances and fire trucks? Yes. Mm -hmm. and yes. But, but we I'm have getting, to disconnect. I'm getting more confused. But, I understand. But you've got a generator that's out of date that has to be disconnected because it's not to code anymore. Right. right. So is it not to code because of the generator or because of the connection in because here? Because of the connection. Okay, because so the, the connection, connection in here is what, do we have a 100 amp service and we need 200 no, we amp service? we have a three phase that only has two wires on it. Okay, so you need the three phase service anyways going forward. Yes, yeah. we need, oh. yeah, we need. Okay, yeah. okay, let's just put that on the shelf now. We need right. three phase service. All right. Three phase generator. No, we, we don't need a, let's not say we don't need a generator yet, but you need three phase service because the thing's going to be out of code. We, we have... We have three-phase service to this building. Okay. We do not have, it, it is a three-phase generator over there that only has two wires coming back to this building. It's not grounded. It's not to code. Okay. So we have to disconnect from that wire. Or put another right. wire into it. Well, no, we, we would have to dig all the way. Oh, it goes right. under I, I know we discussed building. this when we were right. building the other thing there. We right. just are, I'm just trying to backtrack. Yeah. This thing to make sense out of it. So we've already decided that we weren't, when we were doing the excavation over here, yeah, exactly. that we weren't going to spend the money to put a third line in here to bring us up to code. That, that's is, right. is that true? That we, that do you guys true. remember that? Okay. We made that decision this okay. past summer. Okay. I, Mark, it's just my gut reaction in terms of recommending. It's, I'm, I'm spending... Everybody in this town would like to have a backup generator in their house, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe 10% of the people do right. have home standby generators so that when the power goes out, all mm -hmm. the power comes on and the house is warm. Okay. And it seems to me, just from my perspective, this mm -hmm. has become a kind of must-have-in-your-home thing in the last 10 years. Prior to that, nobody had the damn things. Mm -hmm. You know, and now all of a sudden everybody's got to have one. I walk by the Plymouth Town office, right, mm -hmm. once a week, and they got this fancy, I mean, it must have cost them fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 for the town hall. Mm -hmm. And I'm scratching my head and I'm saying, they probably don't require anybody to come to work anyway when the weather's bad. Why, why have they got this powered? I mean, it's not like the police are in there or anything. And... And, and it's just a lot, and I'm just struggling with the amount of money. I mean, well, we're asking citizens to pay for this. This is not some other government agency. This is this, coming out of no, people's pockets. No, I understand pockets. that. But, but we would not be asking to do this if 
we didn't have a situation where we would have no power in this building if the power goes out. And if you had no power, what's going to happen? The police aren't going to go out? The we fire trucks the aren't going to get out? out? You of, couldn't get the fire trucks out. I don't know if you could get the fire trucks out. Yeah. I mean, you, well, yes, yes, you, yes, you can get them out. You're, uh, what you're talking about is, I think it's more important for a long term outage. Um, a day, two days. Right. Um, we have some critical infrastructure that runs off of high voltage power up in the bays, one being our cascade system for our air bottles. Yeah. So I give you the scenario, horrible weather, lightning strike, power out, building fire, right. we need air for our air bottles. If we can't power up that compressor, we have no air for our air bottles. Right. To, you know, so it, you're talking safety there. Um, Emergency communications. Um, if something happens in town and we get shut off, or if we're we're down for a couple days, the state's going to want to communicate with us through their EOC. Um, all the infrastructure for that, all the early or lower infrastructure for that, is in this building. Um, the technology and generators has has come a long ways. Uh, I think that's why you're seeing a lot more of them. Um, and emergency operation centers is is kind of our goal to make this an emergency operation center. Um, eventually, um, they need need that power, and I just I don't think it's a luxury. I really think it's a, a necessity, and I think it's um, I, I really think that the the program they they have for the grants is a fabulous program where they'll pay for. For, for half, and we're working with the, the Homeland Security to do the application, and they can't come out and say you're gonna you're gonna get this money, but they're they're pretty confident that um, our town is is uh, is highly uh, up on the list. Well, in the interest of time here, here's what I'm gonna suggest. I, I'm willing to put this forward at the budget hearing. Mm -hmm. And I think I would probably use more of the argument that he made in mm -hmm. terms of why we really need this. Mm -hmm. And let's see what kind of feedback we get, if any. Now, knowing this town, we're probably going to get none. But, but let's see. I'm not going to provoke an argument. But if I was sitting on the other side, <laughs> I might raise my hand and ask, you know, I don't know when the school snuck one in. It's probably one hundred and eighty thousand yeah, dollars that never I mean, showed up in their budget. Well, the, well, the, well, the budget they never gave us. Right. right. I would have disputed that one too because why do you need the power of the school when you send all the kids home anyway? Uh, you know. But I'm sure there's some rational reason that you know, and it's probably never been on since they've owned it, other than in the maintenance mode. Maintenance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I think that one of the reasons that we could get some pushback on this is because of the change in the overall budget. Right. We'll see. Okay. We'll give it a we'll give it a try. I mean, we'll put it into the budget hearing and see what what kind of feedback we get yep. from citizens. I mean, about. in a year when things were relatively flat, you mm -hmm. might not get as much pushback. But when people begin to look at mm -hmm. what is that a seven percent increase in taxes? Uh, well, yeah, depending on what we. Do here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So the rest. Uh, any other questions on this? So what is? I gave you a packet. Yeah. Which has the total, the budget summary, updated. With okay. All of the new information. Um, So the generator is in here, and you'll also notice a note at the top that says no 53rd payroll. The reason I've removed the $40,200 from this, and the reason is because our payroll system and the bank transfers, because of the way that uh, New Year's fell this year, are payroll for January 2nd 
was actually transferred on December 31st. So it shows up in our cash reconciliation um, as a 2014 expense. So in essence, we had the 53rd payroll already taken out of 14. 14, and all of the numbers on the, the very bottom sheet, it looks like this, the remaining balance sheet, mm -hmm. right? So this budget balance on 12, 23, 14, the 113, 527 includes payment of all of those payroll costs, okay, all right, in 2014. So there's no need to budget it again in 2015. So the... So that's why... So that's why it's $40,200 different than what I handed out to you previously. Okay, then okay. what you sent to us. Yes, yeah. because okay. Because I just found this out, Deb told me about it today. Okay. So, all right. So, we have a total proposed budget, as you can see there, uh, estimated amount of taxes to be raised of two point nine million, two million nine twelve, which is a five and a half percent increase. Right. Okay. That's an increase of 153,000, right? Yes. Over the previous years. Correct. And again, my contention is that almost all of that change is a result of increased principal and interest payments. 163,000. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that if it weren't for that one of those two, and I realize right. there's lots of other yeah, changes, yeah, yeah. but that is the one that's driving. Yes. So the decisions last year to build the buildings, all these other things. The rural development loans. The rural, rural development loans, yeah. all of that. That's all that come stuff's together. finally mm -hmm. coming together now to the point where we're paying now principal and interest. And that's what's driving the budget up this year. That's right. All right. Okay. I mean, there are other and things. And there are other right. things. Um, that that's a one that's negative big item. Because the 153 also includes my the recommendation in the revenues is ninety five thousand dollars in use of fund balance. Okay. Remember last year we used two hundred and forty thousand. Right. I'm recommending to this year use ninety five an additional ninety five thousand. But that's reflected and you can see that our estimated return of fund balance at the bottom of this sheet, right, is hundred and eighty eight. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I took approximately half of that, 188, put it towards the 2000. What sheet mark are you this looking This is the at? very bottom. I, it was a it the was bottom sheet. Your place. It's underneath, probably underneath your memo. Oh, OK. Pay attention here. OK, go ahead. OK, so, so right now we're going to um, we're going to have at the end of the year um, an estimated return on our expenditures, right? Unexpended monies right. of 125,000, and then an estimated revenues in excess of budget of 63,000 almost. Why am I okay. not reading? At the it? very bottom, at the very bottom of that sheet. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. And so our total estimated return, now this isn't audited yet, but our estimated return to fund balance at the end of the year is going to be. About 188,500. And what is our fund balance? What was our fund balance our fund before this gets in there? Our fund balance. Uh, Are we up to seven something? It was. We used 240. It was 950. Right. We used 240, so it was 710, 715, somewhere around there. How much do you need to cover tax anticipation well, notes? I don't want to go much below the. Six hundred thousand mm. dollar level at okay. least, but the um, seven fifteen is enough. The seven fifteen was enough this year. Yes, yes. Okay. And so I I took roughly half of this estimated return and said and applied. So you took one hundred. You took half of the one eighty eight and one, applied. That's right, and that's where the ninety five thousand came. So from. that that would give us a fund balance in. To start with, of about eight hundred. Yes, but 
And again, we'll see when the right. audit comes through, which will be before right. town meeting. So we'll yeah. we'll have the actual numbers. But well, it's not going to no appreciably change this. No, right? no. Um, okay. I hope not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Otherwise, we've got um, another problem. Right. Exactly. Um, so. So that's where the ninety-five thousand came from. I would recommend that we use the ninety-five thousand um, to fund. If you go on to the second page of the summary, this mm. the summary sheet. There's there's um, a couple of things. There's the Corcoran's Pond ten thousand dollars. Yeah, second. There you go. Um, ten thousand right. dollars for Corcoran's Pond would come from fund balance. Uh, the creation of a capital reserve for the ladder truck and funding for $10,000. And then if you drop down, there's a paving and it says new taxes slash fund balance mm -hmm. and 155. I recommend that 75,000 of that be through the fund balance. So remember we moved one road we moved. Um, and in terms of selections of these items, if it really, I mean, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, it's probably. just using ninety five thousand. Sure. But that's because we moved um, Jennings Peak forward a right. year, so paying for that project with the fund balance number was where right. the other okay seventy five came from. So um, that ninety five thousand is included in the one million two thirty five in non tax revenues. Gotcha. Okay. Um, other than that, our special warrant articles. You know, well, first of all, it are there. So basically, everything where is coming out of current taxes and or application of fund balance. There's no borrowing at all. There's no borrowing in, this year's budget. in 2000. So that's the one highlight. We're not yep. we're not borrowing anything. No borrow. We're yep. actually driving it down now. That's correct. Working mm -hmm. on driving the debt down. Okay, gotcha. Uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, I'm I'm looking. I mean, what could the pushback come on? Probably there's some people who will question the race in a some. But we're leaving it up to them to make their own presentation. And to right. Win the, win they they got to convince people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, do we have the original race center in here for twenty five and yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, the arrange uh, right. Gotcha. Forty-one ninety-nine. Yeah. Yeah. I, got, I just found it. Yeah. After that, I mean, basically, the next biggest item is the generator, right? No, is it's is paving. paving. Where, yeah, could we, if we, if we got pushed, we could go back to the old paving schedule, but it made no sense. We're going to fix right. the roads. Let's do it all now. Work. No work. sense doing a little work this year and a little work next year and paying them, hauling them all out of here. Other than that, we're not spending much money on capital items. Sidewalk tractor is now done. It is. We own the Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Can we look at the revenue lines now? Sure. I gave you an updated... Uh, I just want to make sure that I understand. Yep. Uh, we have now done such a fabulous job getting people current on their taxes. That we've cut our own interest. We have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and it's a sizable number. Yeah, that is interest. interest. Twelve and eighteen people delinquent 18. on their taxes. Yeah. Maybe we ought to encourage some people to be late again. <laughs> I mean, that was <laughs> money. Maker. No. no. <laughs> well, no. I mean, well, I mean, at eighteen percent interest, it would be on me why anybody wouldn't pay their taxes on time. But what's MSD interest? Uh Water and sewer. All right, so same thing. Yeah, municipal. So that's is a couple of ways to say that. One is to basically say because there's been a concern, we don't really have now any really delinquent taxpayers that's of right. any size. We got a couple, a couple, but but not, they're, not the our big ones yeah, have been right. reduced. Mm -hmm. They've they've been resolved. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Where is the 44000 for the um, that comes in on this grant for the ambulance? On uh, the first page, Bill, line 3359, it says grants from the state of New Hampshire. Gotcha. I see it. Why, why would the ambulance fees go up that much? Are we, did we increase well, the they're fees? Well, they're only up $8,000. Mm. 31 nine to 40, eight or nine times, oh, it's Yeah, two, so it's 20, 20%. it is 20, it's 25. 10%. Mm. But we, we usually, it's the number of back fee, because we have a collection agency right. that works for us and it, it's based on the number of outstanding bills that they have. Okay. And we, we usually adjust that in right. August, but like Chris said, if he's down already, um, and you want to adjust that number, we can. No, I was just trying to understand it. I mean, you, you're going to use your own judgment as to it. You, you certainly know more than we do. And I'd, I'd like the other one was under the. Rec fees. Where, where, where is the rec department net out? How much are we subsidizing rec? Um, this year, we subsidized Because they them. had a fairly substantial increase in their fees, right? They did. Um, that's two-pronged because Brooke is looking at all right. of the fees again. Um, we need to have that conversation um, when she comes in at the next meeting, I do have a sheet. It's 150 subsidy. To it's 150 dollars. subsidy for 2015. Right. Because that's the guidance. Well, right, now, and that stays the number, right. And, uh, now, and we need to, if the revenues aren't going to hold, well, that's, then she needs to adjust right. the, and and figure out a way to get the expenses down. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, part of bringing her in next time. This year we subsidized it to Grand about 123,000, but I don't have the exact number. So the subsidy somewhere. this year was only 123. Yes, but but we underspent the budget by 31,000. So really, that much? That's correct. And she also has an incentive in her contract. That's to, right. To get that number down. That's right. Where is the rec department? What department number is rec? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Under the proposed budget. Go to page one for rec's expenditures on, go to the thing with the generator on it. Go down no. to line 4520. Uh, your which, on that summary sheet. On your right summary there. sheet. Top, Second top page. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, yes. This is what I... Okay. So we actually this year rec instead of spending two is going to be somewhere around two hundred forty in terms of spending. I can yes, I can tell you exactly roughly. What it is. Yep. That I can. All right, I'm willing to live again. My feel is until Brooke gets, you know, we need to. As long as we keep it to the 150. 24380. 240,380 is what they're going to spend right. this year. Right. Okay. And the revenue this year 
is 116878. So there's about okay. 123 or so. All right. I, I, when Brooke gets a chance to get mm -hmm. on board, mm -hmm. And it, it's going to take three months. I I I I would like to understand how recreation was able to. Sp basically, they met the revenue numbers. They ran all the programs, but spent a heck of a lot less money than they originally asked for. And I'm not sure I understand why. Uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just uh, what, what we had almost what, did they do year, good? We had almost a half a year without the yeah, staffing we yeah. budgeted for. And we, but it didn't affect the programs. <laughs> well, yeah, it did. They did didn't it? have the after-school mm -hmm. programs. There were a lot of programs that they didn't right. do until the summertime. Okay. And if you remember Rachel coming yeah, in and talking to us about the winter, and they didn't do a lot of their winter programs during the vacation weeks and everything else mm -hmm. because... It's, it's the age-old dilemma we face in rec, which is that other than the summer, it's hard to... The programs are hard because they're, they're, they're clumped around really busy periods that's and right. then nothing. That's you right. Know, followed and that's by busy periods followed by nothing. That's part and of And it's what trying to figure a way through that mm -hmm. quagmire. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Okay. Now, um... So we're okay with the with the paving, um, the generator. We're, we'll see what the discussion is. Well, we'll go through the board. capital items. I yeah. the grant match for the new speed board for public safety. You're okay putting it in. We're gonna have a warrant article for nine thousand yeah. dollars. Well, here's here's a question. If we get pushed to try to cut some of the capital spending back, or just cut spending back, period. <coughs> which would the police rather have? Generator or speed board? I don't know. <laughs> I'll ask. <laughs> well, they should I think about what the speed board Isn't the speed is. board the school? What? That's to tell the school the kids they're speeding too fast. You know, to, oh, uh, to replace oh, the oh, cops. Oh, oh, oh. I, I thought it was. I thought it was the the ambulance the left. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's the, it's <laughs> it's replacing. You know, now yeah. you go by in the morning. There's a yeah. police car sitting yeah, they there. They want a speed board. Yeah. They're gonna have a board replacing the guy sitting there who probably doesn't. Well, I I shouldn't say that. <laughs> right. It's Chris every morning. Is it always it's Chris? Is out there? Mm -hmm. yeah. I have to bring him a coffee next time. Because he's the one that's on during the week. So, um, you're okay putting it on for right now? I'm okay with all of these items on. Okay. I think we should hear the tone in the public hearing. Yes. Right. In terms of the total amount being spent. I mean, if, if the direction is, look, you know, find a way to get 150 out of this mm -hmm. budget, we'll go down and figure out a way to get mm -hmm. 150 out of the budget. Well, I yeah, we, uh, we'll try. I mean, we can take one hundred and fifty-five thousand out just by not paving anything. Right. We'll have to make choices. Right. Right. Or do we also have the opportunity to use more fund balance? We could, well, but that's yeah. we'd have to be honest in terms of telling people that's what we're doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Can we make it one hundred and twenty-five thousand? Yes. See, it's but, okay but to say you know, last year we underspent the budget by a right. quarter of a million dollars. Correct. We've decided to take half of that and put it in the piggy bank right. for the rainy day fund, and half of it we're applying immediately mm. to help reduce That's your right. tax burden for next year. That's right. That's a wonderful That's story, good, right? Yep. That's, That's a good way know. to say it. Yeah. Um, could we, if we didn't put anything in the piggy bank, you if get a little more this year. <laughs> right, you get a little more this year, but... But, you know, the piggy bank... Yeah. And would the piggy bank be really hurting? Eh, not no, really no. hurting, and but... And I also think your earlier point of the main reason that the budget is going up is because we now have to pay interest on those loans. Things we, we all have. voted on last yes. year, folks. Yes. <laughs> or 2010. Yeah. 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 Um, it, and on the wording, you had asked me about the wording. Yes, um, specifically. So yeah, well, I, I wanted to share the, with the, the special race center, right. um, uh, particularly, uh, they, and we need to send uh, Chris a copy of what that's going to look like. Mm -hmm. With the exception of the creation of capital reserve accounts, 
and the funding of capital, actual capital reserve accounts, right, or lease agreements like the power cut, there is no mandatory language for special warrant articles. Okay, um, you you'd have to appropriate a sum of money, right? and say that you're appropriating whatever mm. you're appropriating. But other than that, as far as your recommendations for approval, um, we always put in majority vote required. That's mm. not a mandatory part. Um, it is a good idea to say that the amount is not included in the operating budget, mm. so it's in addition in to In the it, case of the race Center, could we say in the Warren article yeah. that this 25 is in addition to I'm going to twenty five thousand being appropriated in the, in the, the, on the operating budget. I, I'm going to ask DRA if we can do that because I thought that's what you yeah. wanted. To I do, would want to do that, but you could do that in presentation as far as that's I'm concerned. Right. I mean, it doesn't. It, no one reads these things anyway. Uh, just but, you guys. Well, we need miles. to tell them. Uh, you know, we need no, to be right, honest absolutely. and say yeah. that this next year they asked for fifty. We've always given them 25. We're going to yeah. vote on whether to give them another 25. Right, and, and I think that should be a slide at the public hearing right. just so that it's very clear. Right, that and then the race center will address okay. why that's they fine. believe yeah. that's necessary. Okay. So, can we have the language? All right. Do we have any petition or articles no. that made the. No. Nope. What about Maryland? Nope. No. Nope. I, I never saw a petition. Did you see a petition? Is either her or I are would we, see a petition. Are we past so. our time for petitions? Yes. No, I, I Mara, uh, and, and I don't know whether I, I, I should have should have told her. I don't think she can even amend this darn thing. No, the what these guys are writing on right now, the time is she wants to yes or no. am, amend this in the point to saying it requires a leash mm -hmm. all the time is beyond the scope. Now she's right. the Moderator, <laughs> so she may allow the amendment. And as I understand it, the moderator. But I think she's given. I think she's basically. The conversation I had is. But well, remember, she came in last year and she was furious because we wouldn't let her have a few extra days for a petition. I remember that specifically because yes. she attacked me. Well, over I, that she one. knew. She knew that, that what the rules are. Okay. She goes all to right. the classes now, so. Yeah. Right. All right. They go over all the time. And her position is up for election again. Uh, it's a one year. It's a yearly, okay. it's a yearly thing. Great. All right. All right. Um, and when's the day for next? It's by next week. For uh, for anybody who wants, to, if somebody wanted to run. For if someone, no, it's it opens next week, I believe, on the twenty mm -hmm. first, and yes. I believe it's open for ten days. Ten to twelve days. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I, th I think it would actually be healthy if somebody wanted to run. So if somebody oh, asks, I mean, you know, you know you you guys are my boss, run. I can't go out and ask people to run against you. No, I don't know, you can't, you, I don't know how you do Unless it. Unless you want me to. Well, um, no. Are you going to run again? Yeah, I, 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 well, I probably will. I, it depends. If, if, I, if I had saw somebody that wanted to run that I was convinced was, was going to be pretty good, I, I wouldn't yeah. run. Yeah, enough's enough. But I haven't heard any. Uh, no one's ever asked me, you know. Right, right. You know, and I haven't gone out and asked. There were a couple of people that I think would probably make pretty good select people. But I think I was giving the two. Bucks usually, to you register. gotta. Yeah, I, I, until I, I don't know that. See, they don't realize it's a paid position. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That would change a few well, minds. <laughs> well, they, they wouldn't be coming in with a seniority. They'd have to yeah. be at the bottom. <laughs> Well, they, they wouldn't be getting that upper echelon pay cut. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the only other things to be thinking about between now and after the public hearing is whatever of these special warrant articles you're going to want to recommend approval of. Um, Let's take the race center one because mm -hmm. I think it's important. I'd like to be able to hear are we rec I, uh, let's let's are we recommending this as a board, uh, board of selectmen? Yeah, extra twenty five. 
Well, you don't have to make the decision now if you I don't know, want yeah. to. But, but I, I, I owe it to, I think we owe it to the beer brothers. <laughs> if we're not going to recommend it, we should tell them. Well, I, I, let, me, let me go on. I, I'm going to recommend that they deserve it at least for a year to try to figure out a way to keep the thing going. I think it's a worthwhile expenditure. Mm -hmm. Now, whether I'd be in favor of a permanent subsidy of that amount, that's a whole other can of worms. Mm -hmm. But I don't have a problem with yeah. the year. See, I can't, I can't vote on it. Oh. Because Robin is a board member. There you are. And are you a board member, Margaret? No, okay. I'm an honorary. You're an honorary right, well, board member. I think that would. But the board's not compensated, are they? No, but the fact that my wife is on the board and if I would recommend something makes me seem, it, it doesn't roll right off my tongue. Margaret, would you be in favor for a year at least? Yes, for okay. one year. For one yeah. year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then after that, I'd have to see a lot more mm -hmm. as to why it's in the town's interest to, right. to, I mean, to I, fund I, it at yeah, a higher level. Like I said, I'm not finalizing any language until after the public hearing anyway, but, but yeah, so... This. I'm going to take what you gave. I'll send that off to her and okay. say this is what's going to be in there. Something very similar to this, and uh, you you're going to get and, and it's going to be and there'll be some statement. This is recommended by the board. Okay, um, and I will check. You want the language in there about the other twenty-five thousand, if we can, or do you want me to? No, I don't care. About? Whatever it doesn't matter to me as long as it gets presented that okay. way. Okay. So it'll be cleaner if we don't put it in the end. Leave so. it the way it is. That's okay. fine. All right. Good. Great. Do you need a motion to move this budget forward to the hearing? Yes, please. I'm going to make I'll, a motion to move this budget forward to the public hearing. I'll, I'll, my turn to second. I'll second it. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I think you got me up by three seconds. This <laughs> okay. And we are... Uh, what um, are we doing to let people know there's a public hearing? Uh, we have to, we'll post it, we'll put it on the website. Put it we'll on the website. Give it to Put, it, at, give we'll it, put it on anything, Jan. Facebook, no, anything you got, yeah, yeah. you know? Yep. We, the more the merrier. Yeah. That if you actually want to influence it, mm -hmm. this, this is the meeting to come mm -hmm. to, not the meeting at the annual meeting, because by then it's almost too late. Right. And I will take. <laughs> Nobody a, will show up. <laughs> I will take a stab. Where we usually have twenty or thirty. So. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, I'll take a stab at the at the slides and send those out to you for Great. comments. I'll base them basically off of what we used to do. What sure. We've done in the past. Okay. Yep. Um, good. Yeah. I uh, my only advice, and it's just the way that I do it, is try to stay with the big picture. Right. And, well, you avoid going slide. into yeah. the mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. detail if you yep. can, yep. because it's easy to get. You know, why are you spending eighty? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should invite Russ back. As <laughs> as <laughs> Russ, is honorary yeah. gadfly. <laughs> missing. All right. Um, oh, uh, we do need to. We do need a vote uh, from you on, so we can um, do the audit. Um, with the bonds, or the bonds, the capital projects, mm -hmm. and what we're going to mm -hmm. do for closing them out. Ah, um, yes. Remember that mm -hmm. sheet? Mm -hmm. yeah. have to find mine. It is a sheet that looks like this. It was in your packet mm -hmm. uh, that I sent to you. So it should be electronic. Oh, it's got electronic. Electronic. In the okay. electronic. Okay. Part. And what is in this? It, it says at the top, Capital Accounts Review. Okay. Now, a couple of things on this. Um, I have I've recommended to close six of the accounts. Those are cash accounts, which we've either spent the entire thing, the entire amount yep. that was budgeted, or there's just a small balance left. That gotcha. money goes into fund balance at the end of the year. The others, I would recommend that you vote to encumber to 2015. And the two res rescinds? 
Now, well, the votes to rescind are different <laughs> because those are actual town okay. meeting votes. They're not your votes. Okay. Like where, where is this thing? Is it after? Oh, all right. I'll look at it this way. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So it's 900 here, 900 here, $6 here, and the others don't have any money to close. Right. So that's what we're, we have to vote to close them to s contribute those back to the fund balance. Fund balance. Yeah. Or buy a new tire for the sidewalk truck. Well, let's, no, let's talk about this. What is the maintenance vehicle lift? The maintenance vehicle lift. There are some outstanding bills that was that was uh, rolled into our building, right? The, for the new building, and there's still. I'd like to encumber that sixty-two hundred because there are outstanding bills. Right. That we have a little bit of a retainage number. But this um, is, we're not going to use this, this buy new tools. So no, 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 no. Okay. No. All right. I'm okay with that. Um, now, the others, the encumber, are there any other questions other than the lift? That's the federal property acquisition. Yeah. That's the. Is that um, the generator? Well, the, generator. <laughs> the useless generator. Yeah, the useless generator. Oh no, um, can't but, be. But Are we going to trade in on those? No, we have to. We can give them back, though. Do we have to pay? Postage? Yes, we have to pay shipping to give them back. Um, but the that federal property acquisition is for any incidentals with picking up the new equipment. Um, that's money that's been there probably now for three or four years. Um, I know Dave does on a regular basis go onto the property property list of available equipment and look. So I would recommend that we continue to maintain it. But I, those lists of things we can acquire. Mm -hmm. You know, part of it is if you got nineteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars, you go down and say, "Oh, I could use one of those," and that's how yeah. we end up with two that's generators a good we idea. didn't need. Do we really, you know, you know, I, I'm, I'm of the mind of, why don't you take 10 of this and use it to acquire your new generator? Well, I realize, yeah, so you, could, you take 10 goes back in the kitty, mm -hmm. so it leaves you 9,000 left instead of 19. Mm -hmm. um, I like that's that a idea. big amount of money, and I, I, and I I don't want. I think if we, you know, you know, well, here we can get a Hummer and get another Hummer, and we can get it. To, yeah. You want? Let, do you have the money in your budget to, to get it? We can. We can use ten thousand. Why don't we use ten? Generator. If the generator goes through, I'm going to recommend. You know, why don't we take this down by ten, and we'll apply that to the generator. You, you don't have to change any of the no, numbers. No. We'll just no. internally we'll know that we're doing it. We we could say that we we had some money in property acquisition, we'll just leave the federal off. And we can apply 10 of that, sure. we can apply some of this, and it makes it look, I'm, I'm okay. trying to help you sell this thing, yep. even though I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> Ambulance. Uh, you, you need that because you have to actually pay that bill. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that, that money's been spent. Okay. Okay. How about the grinder pump? It's that is... Still waiting to pay? We are... We are in the design phase, and we are going to get it in 15. Yes. Let's take the money away from the library. No, can't do that. Well, without a town meeting vote, I guess. That's their money. We now, need a plan on single stream recycling, oh, or yes. we got to give that money back. Well, and, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Um, All right. I have a meeting with the town administrator in Thornton okay. uh, regarding their 2015 plan. Um, that meeting is next Tuesday. They have a selectman's meeting next Wednesday. Um, I'd like to um, go to that meeting and discuss with them now. The reason that I have a bunch of question marks here is, do you want to disencumber this or, or rescind it, send it back? Because this is authorization to spend. 
Okay. Yeah, I hear you. Now, I don't know. I. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Is that actually cash that goes into the? Was it no. The, no. No. It's that not is, cash. It is it's not an authorization. Right. It's, it's an not authorization bonded. to bond. Mm -hmm. I would say let's keep the authorization until we know what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. You know, especially if you're going to meet with them, we have an opportunity. But we got to find we, out. We got to be. Yeah. You know, yeah, we, we are not yeah. going to go spend three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> well, if we have to buy anybody. a new truck, we're going to get pretty close. Yeah, but well, we're not going to do it and not tell anybody. Oh no, I understand yeah. that. Well, but what do you mean by not tell anybody? Go to town meeting and say we've got a plan here to spend three hundred thousand dollars on da da da. Now, do you you notice there's no warrant on it because right, you right, don't right. need okay. it? Yes, I but understand. We're, yes, I got we're, it. Yeah. we're not gonna. Well, I think we should by town meeting by March. We're going to know number one what their plan is and whether or not they want us to participate in it and so we would be able to give okay. them an update. You almost have to vote to rescind that amount of money. You right? do. No, it, uh, the reason that I, it is a vote right. to rescind. You you have to actually put it in as a warrant. Okay. All right. So, now, all right, on we'll leave it alone. For the these time. two that say vote to rescind, I'm going to include a warrant article to close those out. Okay. Just because sure. we can't get them off our books unless we have a vote. All right. Okay. Um, the, the rest of these we're leaving alone, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so can I get a motion to encumber the, m the monies as shown here? I'll make a motion to encumber the monies as shown <laughs> on, what is that called? With the exception, uh, uh, except that you'll, you're going to take 10,000 out of the uh, uh, emergency fund there or whatever, the, the, the federal, federal property acquisition, acquisition fund. Yeah. Now, well, here's what we could do, though. If we use $10,000 in the warrant article, it'll, we won't have to reappropriate it. Because what we're going to well, do I is... Well, I didn't know. It, could you... If, let's, if the, the generator gets approved, yes. could, you, could you in all good conscience apply from that sure. fund $10,000? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. You don't have to do anything. So we don't have to raise the taxes. Then we're yeah. fine. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Good. So we have a motion? Yeah, yeah I'll make a motion, a motion to yep. approve okay. that. Do I hear a second? <laughs> <laughs> Whose turn? <laughs> I'll second. All right, all those in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Great. All right. Okay. What else? Correspondence, privilege of the floor. Anything else? Anything come up? Wow! I hope you had a stuck good afternoon. Are you like there's a, there's no heat in your house or something? <laughs> 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 it's the first time. I thought we were out of the post office. <laughs> 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 I like that. Look at that. I got a new We do. Uh, we've got another subject that I need to cover in non-public uh, okay. with just the selectmen. Okay. All right. Okay. And I have Thank to you. leave it. Thank you very much.